Hey there. So when I was growing up as a young developer, there was a couple of things that really helped me along my way to make me go from a good developer to an awesome developer. In terms of games, one of those things was Keith Peters when I was learning Flash because that was the way you made games back in the day. He wrote a bunch of books. He had a great blog, Bit 101, which I believe is still up. He talked a lot about how you make games and the, the fundamentals that go into it. So I wanted to take a lot of his examples and rewrite them in Swift and kind of explain them to you. So we'll start off by creating a game. We're just going to call this game underscore one. And we'll say that now what we're going to do is in game underscore one, we're going to make a, a ball class, create ball dot Swift and ball dot Swift is going to be just a basic ball that we can use for all of our different simulations. So we're going to create a class called ball and we won't create this in the next one. We'll just reuse this ball from this one and we'll create a size, which is going to be a CG size. We'll create uh, the node itself, which is going to be the SK shape node. We need to import sprite kit. Okay. So then we can import SK shape node and we will force that because we won't force the user to create that because it'll be created on its own. We'll create the init method, and in this sort of constructor, we'll just allow them to construct the size uh, of this ball, which will be a CG size. Uh, Self.size will be equal to size, and we'll create the center of the ball, which will be equal to a CG point make. Um, X will be size.width times 0 0.5. Y will be size.height times 0 0.5. And we'll create a circle, which will be a CG rect make. The, we'll say that x is going to be equal to the center dot x. Let's say minus 40. Let's say the y is going to be center dot y minus 40. We'll say dot 0, 40 dot 0. And then we'll do 80 dot 0, and the height will be 80 dot 0. Um, we'll say self dot node is going to be equal to a new SK shape node. So that will make this shape node. Um, we'll say self.node.path is going to be equal. This is where we actually draw this. We'll say a new UI Bezier uh, path, and we'll do oval in rect, and the rect we'll use is this circle that we created, and we want to grab the CG path from that. It helps if we make CG size correct. And then from there, we can just create uh, node.fill color. We'll say that's equal to a new SK color dot red color. So we'll make a red ball. We'll do self dot node dot stroke color is going to be equal to nil. So now we have our ball. We can go right to our game scene because our game view controller sets everything up. We're going to delete the uh, did move view stuff. We'll delete everything in the touches began because that's going to bother me. There we go. And in the update function, we'll update that in a second. And we're going to start off just by making a ball that kind of bobs up and down. So we'll start off our game scene just by creating a couple of variables. One, we need the ball, which is going to be of type ball now that we have our ball available to us. We'll make one that's an angle, which is going to be equal to 0.0. .0. That's a double. We'll make one that's the center Y, which is going to be equal to 0.0, .0 which is the center of the screen. We'll say one that's the range, and we're going to play around with these numbers in a second. That's going to be 100. And we're going to say the ball speed, so B speed is equal to 0 0.1. So then we'll do in view did move, we'll create the new ball. We'll say that's equal to a new uh, ball. The size is going to be um, the size of the SK scene, so self.size. We'll say self.add child and we'll add the ball to the screen. So we'll grab the ball.node and we'll add it to the screen. The touches began, we're not going to do anything with yet. Now in the update function, this is going to happen on every single frame 60 times a second. We're going to say ball.node and here's where we're going to change the position based on some information. We're going to say the position is going to be equal to a CG float because it needs to be a CG float. So whatever we do, we have to type it as a CG float. We're going to take the center.y and we're going to add 
sine, and we're going to use the angle, which is currently 0, and we're going to multiply that times the range. Now this will make the ball bop up and down, but not until you take the angle and you increase it every time a little bit by the speed. So what we have here is we're changing the position, the y position, based on the current angle, and we're going to increase that angle every frame according to b speed. So let's just run this and show you what it looks like when you do this. So that, that looks really nice there. It's really, really smooth. I don't know how smooth it is on this recording. Um, what we have here is we have the B speed. So if we were to lower the speed down to 0 0.01 and we run this again, you'll see that it does the same thing, but it just moves a whole lot slower. So it's like the ball is waving in slow motion. And then if we were to take the speed and we were to increase it let's say to 0 0.5, then um, we would get something like this. Really, really fast um, motion. Let's just make it back to our one. Now, if we change the range and we make the range smaller, then you'll see that the height that it goes gets smaller. And if we make this range bigger, let's say to 500, oops, let's try that again. Let's ch change the range to 500 and run it, then you can see that we get a really big wobbling there. And if we uh, change the range uh, to just something like five, then you'll get an incy bincy tiny little, tiny little wobble right there. It's almost like it's kind of floating in space there. You can really play around with this. So you could also take this and play around with the X position as well and you could do the same thing to the X obviously and the key is to experiment with this to see what happens make the range a little bigger let's make it 100 run it so now you get a diagonal now the X and the Y are going at the same speed so if we made let's say an X speed and we made a var Y speed that was equal to 0 0.5 and we said that this is equal to x speed we'd need to make an angle x x angle a y angle and we multiply this we do the sine of the x angle and the sine of the y angle we got it backwards and then we do the um, x angle is equal to that and then the y angle is equal to that and we run it so now they're at different speeds. You'll see that you can really mess around with this a lot. Um, let's try this being at just twice the speed, 0 0.2. So now you can see you get a nice waving fall going back and forth there. 